Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Redivis RT82 DMR dual band handheld radio. All right, everybody, welcome back. So I got something kind of different for you today. Um, I do a lot of ham radio stuff, but um, this is my first venture into digital radio in any format when it comes to ham radio. This is the Redivis RT82 DMR radio. Uh, DMR, for those that don't know, stands for Digital Mobile Radio. It's a just another internet, another internet, another ham radio or radio protocol. Um, this was basically a commercial mode that was adopted into the ham radio community. So, the reason we're doing this video today, and I want to give you a look at the screen here because we're scanning through our, our local digital frequencies. Um, the reason we're doing this video today is because Redivis is having an amazing sale on these. For the non-GPS versions, and we'll explain what the GPS does later on, for the non-GPS version, which is your basic analog and digital radio, they are doing a buy one get one free. And I'm going to put the link down below, okay? So I want to get the sale information out of the way. So if you buy one of these, you get another one free. If you're getting the GPS version, you buy one and you save $80 directly. So if you follow that link down below and you're not interested in the rest of the whole thing and you understand how DMR works and everything, that's perfect. Go check them out. they got a great sale going on. And i got to say, um, if you hang around for the review of the radio, this radio is definitely a winner. It's definitely a well-made, nice radio. One of the first things I noticed about it is it feels like a commercial radio. If you've ever held a police radio or a fire radio or something like that, this is exactly what it feels like. Feels good in the hand. It's nice and sturdy. It is um, waterproof. So I believe, what's the setting on it? I forgot to write that down. IP667, uh, waterproof, dustproof rating. So everything is sealed up in this radio. I believe it can take up to uh, 30 minutes in a uh, one meter of water. Somebody's talking there. Anyway, um, it can take up to 30 minutes in one, uh, one, uh, one meter of water for 30 minutes. So it's a fairly decent uh, deal here. You'll notice where you connect your programming cable and your other stuff that it's sealed up here with a rubber grommet around the outside. And you'll need a screwdriver to take that off. Or you can leave it loose and just do it with your hands. But I would assume that would affect the waterproofness of the radio. Anyway, let's get into the radio. One of the things I noticed is, being that it's both digital and analog, I wanted to test the sound on it. Um, the sound quality coming from the radio is excellent in both modes. Now, for those of you that are ham radio operators and have no clue about digital yet, like I was about three days ago, <laughs> this radio will do analog. You can put your analog frequencies and your repeaters and all that into it. Works perfectly fine. The analog sound quality on this is very good. I've gotten good sound reports back. Good reports back on my voice on it. So, um, it's pretty darn impressive. The digital quality is other world. It's just unreal. Um, if you guys, some of you guys may live in areas where the police use digital, um, the P25 scanners, you'll understand what I mean by the voice quality. It's totally a different thing. It's just, it sounds like somebody's right in the room with you. All right, it's also two, two meters and 440. So this is really the first radio that kind of broke onto the market um, in digital mode that's two meter, 440, and also analog and digital. So if you're looking to upgrade your Baofeng, you know, and you're not really interested in the digital modes, would I buy this? I might, I might eventually learn about the digital modes. I had to learn very quickly for this video because I'm reviewing it, so I had to learn pretty quick myself. So the radio comes with the following items. Let me bring them over here. You have, of course, your charger and charger plug. If you get enough of these radios, you'll realize these are, you know, you end up with a ton of them. You get your programming cable. It is a nice touch, but when you start doing the DMR stuff, you realize the programming cable is really necessary. You will notice this is a unique kind of USB cable. This does require a driver. All of the software you need is on Redivis's site, and I have to say this was perhaps the most easiest install I've ever had with radio software. This needed a driver. I went over to Redivis's site, downloaded the driver, plugged it in, Click the driver. Next thing you know, it worked. No messing around, no tr changing IRQ ports, none of that crazy old stuff from back in the day. It just worked, okay? 
Same thing with the software. I'll, sh I'll show you the software later on. So the radio comes with a programming cable and all the accessories. Um, I'll give you a quick look at the box over here. I have a lot of things on the table today, so <laughs> there's your box. So those are your accessories, okay? It is a Tier 1 and Tier 2 radio, for those of you interested in doing digital, why that's important, okay? Tier 1 and 2, Tier 1 radios will only do simplex. They will only do point to point. Tier 2 radios will do simplex and repeaters. So, Tier 2 can do DMR repeaters. They also have two time slots and many, like, kind of like sub-channels for separate streams that run on the same channel. So a Tier 2 radio can hold multiple conversations in the same time slot. All right, so what are some other features? Well, this has 3,000 memory channels, so you can load it up with 3,000 different repeaters or different talk groups from a repeater or different frequencies that you use locally. That's pretty cool. That's a whole lot of channels to put in there. And especially when you start using DMR talk groups, you'll realize you need that many because here's an example. This is what's called a code plug. I hope you can see how big that is. That is a local repeater here in Vegas, okay? Um, right outside of Vegas, actually. And um, these, this is one repeater. These are all the different talk groups on it. So as you can tell, 3,000 <laughs> gets used up fairly quick, but it's a good amount to have. It's not a ridiculous amount, is my point. It's a good amount to have. Because you can put one repeater in, in one zone, with all those different talk groups. Now, you will under, you, later on I'll explain to you the zones and stuff on this. Basically, zones are groups of frequencies. We'll get into that when I show you the programming software. I don't want to make the video too in-depth or bore people with it, but I'm just really excited that I was able to figure it out myself, you know, so I'm pretty cool. Now, as mentioned before, there are two versions of the radio, one with the GPS, one without. The one with the GPS unit can be useful. You can use that to send um, GPS data back and forth. There is even a bit of software that you can connect to a... Uh, tablet and do APRS with that. You ham folks will understand that. You non-ham folks will, what's that? It's automatic position reporting system, you know. It allows somebody to sit on a screen and watch where everybody is on a course or something like that. That stuff comes in handy when you're doing big ham events and you want to see where everybody is. Now, as far as output power goes, it has 5 watts on VHF and 4 watts on UHF. Can go down to 1 watt on each band. I'm going to move the stuff out of the way. The speaker is loud, clear. I've gotten, as I said, great audio reports and also sounds really good. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut in a clip last night after I got it programmed. I shot this clip last night of um, some conversation going on between two hams, and the conversation's fairly mundane, talking about cookies. But you'll see how clear and nice sounding this is. Seriously, this digital audio on this kind of stuff sounds like somebody's in the room with you. So let's roll in that clip. Today for a little key exchange we're having at work uh, later this week, and uh, I think I got some nice cookies there, so that's good. And um, that kind of thing. I didn't want to dare try baking anything, or I might mess it all up. All right, as I said, this is going to be an ongoing feature on my channel as I learn more about this. But I did want to show you the programming software. Um, once you figure this out, I'm just going to give you a little bit of how I understood it. Once you figure this out, it's going to be a great big aha moment, okay? <laughs> Basically, when you start out here, you've got your two frequencies. You can choose whether you want the A or B range to be the, the 2 meters or 440. You have your basic information here, your general settings. This is where you'll need to put in your radio name and your radio ID, okay? And I don't have the, the, uh, my, my code plug opened in there. But um, you'll need to apply for a radio ID, and I will put that link down below as well. You can go online, you put your call sign in, your name, and you get a radio ID. And that way, you're in a database, so everybody knows when you call up a repeater on that radio, that's you. Okay. Um, and again, I have to download the stuff from this one, because I programmed it on a different, uh, different computer. I've lost my mouse. There we go. Okay. You can send texts with these, okay? You are, have the ability to be able to send text messages back and forth. Um, it's kind of handy. They have to be preset texts. Um, some of this stuff can be set up so that you have, I forget what they call it, a lone worker mode, or I don't see it on here. But some of this stuff can be set up so every 10 minutes, the radio will remind you, lone worker response time, there you go. You can set the time for every 10 minutes. The radio will remind you to check in 
and you can check in, say, okay, I'm all right. So this is if you're going out somewhere, say if you want to keep track of a ham radio operator that's going to a potentially dangerous area. Every 10 minutes, you can check in. If he doesn't check in, the radio will trigger, and it will open up the microphone, and you'll be able to hear what's going on and respond to the area if he's in trouble. So that's something neat, too. It's just a side thing that really has nothing to do with what we're programming here. Um, let's get into digital contacts. Nope, we don't want that. Call groups. Let's get out of there. I'll get over to my zones. Okay. Your zones. Let me explain this to you. Once you program stuff in here, your zones will be areas where you um, put your frequencies and put your talk groups that you like. Um, I could name this zone W7XYZ, all right? And that can be one repeater, and I can have all my talk groups listed in here, and I can put it all in there. So on channel mem me member A, because it's AB, it's a dual watch radio. I'm sorry, I'm putting my hand in front of you. It's a dual watch radio. So you can put both frequencies. Let's wait till it comes back. See that bridge US? And then underneath it, Las Vegas? Both those will be able to be monitored. This is your A, this is your B. So you can put both of those in there. So you can put both of those in there, and it's fairly simple to do. That's where you'll put your zones, your channel information here. So this is where you're going to put every single channel that you're going to use on here. For analog stuff, it's really simple. You have your receive, you have your offset, and you have your admit criteria, which is your PL tone in this case. When it's digital, you will have a um, color code. We'll explain that more later. I'll get into programming more later. I just wanted to show you the software. It's very intuitive. Once you know what you're doing, it's really not difficult. Don't be um, freaked out by digital modes on ham radio. Um, I'll tell you something. Three days ago, I knew nothing about DMR radio. And by the way, DMR stands for digital mobile radio. I keep saying that, and I didn't tell you what it means. And uh, I had absolutely no problem figuring it out. So let me move the computer out of the way, and we'll wrap it up. So my point of the video today is really to get you to let you know about the sale that's going on with these. Um, I'm definitely going to be featuring this more in later videos. I'm going to explain to you how to do basic programming, like just putting a regular analog repeater in, as well as putting in a DMR repeater with all its different talk groups and putting in code plugs. Now, when you hear code plugs, that's going to sound confusing. This is a code plug, like I showed you before. It's just the same frequencies over and over again. Your time slot and your color admit code. You know, like that's like a PL tone for digital color code. The talk group name and the talk group ID number. So the repeater knows where to go. Okay? So it's very, very simple. It's not a difficult thing to do. It's not hard to figure out once you get it. And we'll be doing a lot more programming later. My point of doing this video today is get the sale out so you guys know about it. You can buy one of these from the link I'm going to give you down below and get one free. That's a darn good deal. So you buy one, you get one free. And for the GPS version, if you buy one that has the GPS inside, you will get $80, $80 I'm sorry, $80 off on that. So like I said, I'll be doing more videos programming-wise. I'm going to teach you how to do both programming modes. We're going to do a separate video for each one, for analog and for digital. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you go out there and give some digital radio a chance. It's not all that difficult. I know it seems like it's uh, confusing at first, at least it was for me. I was like, what the heck is this? You know, how do you do this stuff? But it really isn't all that difficult. And it's actually kind of entertaining and fun. And, you know, if, you, if you're the type of person that likes to learn and you're the type of person that really likes radio, digital is definitely worth the upgrade. The sound is incredible. And as we showed you in that earlier video, the sound quality is just off the charts when it comes to digital stuff. All right, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to put a link down below where you can pick this radio up. Um, like I said, they're buy one, get one free from the link. And the one with the GPS is $80 off. Can't beat that. Don't forget to check out our Amazon store down below. Um, we have everything in that store that you could possibly want for the stuff that I reviewed, for survival, for preppers, stuff like that. Um, if you don't see anything in the store you like, just click the link, shop as you normally would. And it helps the channel out a little bit. And don't forget our Thrive Life. Um, store as well. We have lots of freeze-dried stuff in there for you to start your uh, food prepping needs. Um, that will be underneath the third link underneath you. I'll probably have to click see more to see it. Um, that's our Thrive Life store. You'll be able to go in there and pick any kind of freeze-dried stuff you want. There's nothing to join. There's no clubs. If you want to join, that's up to you, but you can just go in and buy just like a normal person. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today. 
Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.